Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Happy Friday, beer geeks. It's, no, I've said Friday already. It's it's 5pm, 5, 5 but possibly 4pm or even 6pm, wherever you are. I'm not sure our concept really works when we have an international audience, Bradley. That's something that's dawning on me pretty quickly. Time is relative or something. But doesn't it, I mean, the idea comes from the sort of old saying, it's 5pm somewhere, or it's Friday 5pm somewhere. That sort of, like, uh, I always <laughs> think of it as like a sort of Florida Keys mentality where <laughs> you're like ah, i can have a drink you know like i've i i'm on holiday it's 5 p.m it's that kind of thing like i've clocked off for the day it's 5 p.m somewhere johnny i mean that would explain why we frequently record this at about 11 a.m <laughs> <laughs> well you need you need time to stick the uh pre-roll on it and the, you know like the advert and that so you know yeah and ed- edit out all the swear words Oh yeah, yeah. Some some <laughs> f bombs and stuff. I think Sorry, you, uh, someone despite... said that I did swear. Yeah, you did. Week, right? you, you dropped an yeah. f bomb, mate. Despite as explicitly oh. saying we're going to change, we're going to turn this ship around, so that you know kids can listen. Because I know they're all dying to listen to a a niche podcast all about craft beer. And then you you drop one about halfway through. Damn it! It's it's something I I like. I would never ever swear in front of my mum ever. Uh, so you've got to picture your mum whenever we do this podcast, is that? Yeah, is but that I don't want to do forward? that because then that will just mean that I can't. It will curtail what I'm saying. Definitely curtail what I'm saying. But anyway, did your mum not listen I'm to a... the podcast? No, no, I don't think so. I hope not. I hope not because she does watch videos occasionally. But she's she's she lives with my sister with two toddlers and a newborn baby, so she hasn't really got time to listen to uh, Old Brother's podcast. But this, this is days. the thing, Bradley. There's people living in similar circumstances that are listening yeah, and you're yeah. dropping F-bombs because you're not picturing your mum. Oh, dear. Can we stop talking about me picturing my mum, please? <laughs> okay. Weird. No, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, so, yeah, welcome to another edition of the Friday 5pm. We've had a pretty epic, um, a pretty epic week. We've got a lot to get through. A lot of yeah. news, a lot of videos, a lot of views. We've got a question this week, which is oh, not a small question. No, um, no, no. But we're going we're to start with some quick bits of, of admin, shall we? Yeah. So firstly, next Saturday, that's Saturday the 7th of May, at 4pm UK time, we will be hosting the Big Brew Day, which is a homebrew event run by Grainfather and indeed with Lalaman Yeast, um, in which we will be brewing live, brewing a recipe from uh, um, Weathered Souls in Texas. We'll be brewing a fruited Imperial Porter with cacao nibs, which uh, I, I just bought more cacao nibs basically when I was doing the pastry stout order and we'll be brewing that live on the channel taking questions interviewing marcus the founder of the brewery interviewing some people from Grainfather, chatting to the founder of malt miller um and drinking lots and lots of very tasty beer brad will be in attendance at the studio and we'll be live for about five hours so brad will barely be in attendance um by the end of the five hours but Uh. that might be even more fun to watch to be honest I'm trying to work out if I book a travel lodge or not. I'm not sure what the situation is going to be because it's quite. We're filming it from like, is it 4 p.m. in the afternoon? Yeah. So it's going to go into the wee small hours. Uh, about 9 p.m. 
Yeah, that's the wee small hours. Is that the small hours? For, well, it certainly yeah, is for yeah, me yeah, as, a, yeah. as a new dad now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You told me, didn't you tell me you go to bed at 8pm? Did you Sorry, tell me that? that? If I imagine that. Do you go to bed at 8pm? Yeah, currently. Nice. Um, nice. To, to be honest, because because my daughter wakes up at five, I do four hours of joint childcare and then go to work. And then I finish at five and do two hours of joint baby care and then cook dinner and then we go straight to bed like there's there's just nothing left in me i'm a i'm a ghost of a man you're at your um, tanks out of but, gas mm. by that point yeah fair enough i made the mistake of playing tennis this week and i'm like 4 days ago and i'm still recovering all all semblance of fitness um of just being able to stand up for sustained periods of time are now now gone wow that's Sad. That's anyway, sad, but, uh... um, <laughs> what else have we got to talk about? We've got to talk about, um, I'm, I'm also going to be, Bradley doesn't even know this, but I'm going to be hosting cheese and beer matching at the Wild Beer Co. Beer and Cheese Festival. When's this? Uh, it's a good question. And the reason I've said it's a good question and continue to stall is because I can't remember, but I am looking it up on Google as I stall. And I can tell right. you, Bradley, that it's on the 21st of May. Nice. 21st it's of May, down May. at Westcombe Farm. Yeah, nice. All right, um, cool. And, and they I'll just delivered along. me some cheese so that I can check the matches that they want me to uh, talk through. Um, so, yeah, if you're around in the southwest of the UK on the 21st of May, come by for a cheese and beer tasting and the Cheese and Beer Festival. I'll be selling books and looks. Um, and I haven't got another word that rhymes with that. But, yeah, so that's another bit of admin um that yeah you can come down to should you fancy uh i think that's the admin is that the admin what have you been up to badly this week have you done anything beery or you, received you could sell, any beer? uh you could sell coat hooks as well johnny that rhymes Co- coat hooks um, there you go books yeah, looks yeah. and coat hooks thanks yeah uh oh just on a wild beer note did you see that um robbie knox uh had brewed a uh a, a sort of i think it was a saison a medieval saison they were calling it with Wild Beer Co. that that's apparently matches perfectly with a sausage roll. Yeah, so I, I, like, I have cans I like in my concept. fridge. How have you got cans in your fridge? I've got cans in my fridge. I've got to say, it's quite a confused concept, isn't it? It's a medieval saison that suits something that I don't think they had in medieval times. Um, sausage rolls. Surely sausage, sausage rolls, rolls are, are pre... Uh, they're, they're sort of pre-Roman Empire, aren't they? Here we go. Here's, here we go. We're off. Re- We're off on the tangent. When were sausage I, rolls invented? <laughs> I, I hear that um, along with that Pete Bog mummy that I referenced many moons ago. Good lord! Yeah, he was he was holding a sausage roll when they dug when they found him in the in the Pete. But the Pete Bog mummy, yeah, was holding a sausage roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I and was... I, don't, I don't think that even in the preserve that is Pete Boggs. <laughs> um, I've I've just, I've just googled it, mate. I mean, it's only Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, it says the wrapping of meat and other foodstuffs in dough could be traced back to classical Greek and Roman eras. However, sausage Fuck, rolls I just in got the it right. sense. Oh, I literally said it's pre-Roman em- Roman Empire, man. Come on, we I'm said pre-Roman. <laughs> I said I did say pre-Roman, but I mean, Pete. Thinking about it, Pete Bog mummies. I think are they Neolithic or are they medieval? I'm not sure. I think they're Neolithic, so they are pre-Roman. Anyway. They probably don't have sausage rolls. But, e- um, either way, they're saying they're saying that that no sausage rolls were invented in the nineteenth century. God damn it! <laughs> um, it and that Greg sells like a, around two point five million sausage rolls a week, or one hundred and forty million a year. If we can call them sausage rolls, not a fan of the Greg's regular sausage roll, but the vegan one, which tastes the same as the Greg's regular sausage roll big fan of because it doesn't taste the same bradley it tastes identical mate they it taste does not identical. for a start it's not got an egg wash on it which is super fr- like i realize that eggs aren't vegan but it's super frustrating because it's just flaky it's not flaky and crispy okay uh, okay that's a fair point that is a fair point <laughs> but apart from that like i don't think there's a lot of pig in a uh, greg's regular sausage roll i think it's mostly bread this is sorry slander, just put bradley. it out there, i might guys. have to edit this out uh, just putting it out there. I if mean, we had I any like northern the... listeners. They're gone. <laughs> I like the vegan one, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not averse to a Greg sausage roll, 
I mean, it's not a great sausage roll, is it? Let's be honest. But the vegan one, I'm like, you know what? It sort of tastes kind of meaty, so I'm all right with that. Whereas Ooh. the one that the one that's supposed to be meat, I'm like, it doesn't taste very meaty, so I'm not all right with that. Um, I'd rather have the one that case, tastes kind of meaty that doesn't have any meat in it. That's that's some Brad logic for you there. There we go. You um, you heard it here first, and you, you probably won't listen again. Um, where, how did we get onto sausage? Oh yeah, sorry. Robbie Knox has has made made yeah, a sausage yeah. roll beer. How have um, you got? But how have you got cans of that in your fridge already? Has he sent you cans? Because because I'm a, I'm a pretty big deal, Bradley. Well, they haven't bloody sent me any cans. I'm I'm getting frustrated. What? <laughs> I'll, where, I'll, where I'll, have you got? I'll, I'll save you a can for the yeah. uh, for the big brew day. Yeah, I want to try it. I got Sounds two cans. Weird. Okay, cool. Yeah, there we go. Um, I've I've nice. only got them because they've sent me the beers and the cheeses to get ready for the beer and cheese matching, and they, I, I oh, guess they just slip those in. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's part of that yeah. deal. I'm not, I'm see, not a big deal, Brad. You've met me. Um, you are a big deal. I've I've seen your garage with your beers in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody needs to help me out with my stash. It's getting silly. Um, yeah. yeah, my fridge, my my fridge, the fridge in the studio now is just just chocker, and now it's a cheese fridge as well. So it's 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 getting out of hand. Um, I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a purge. Not a purge. I drank quite a lot of beers last. Week. You had a session, yeah. I had a sesh with my friend. He came over, and we drank some beers in the garden. Optimistically, uh, it was actually pretty cold, so we drank a few beers and then got a little bit chilled and had to come inside. And then we ordered kebabs uh, to the to come to the door. So it was a bit, um, it's a bit of a drunken night, really. It was good. I was expecting you to be like, and we drank these beers, and oh the, yeah, no, no we drank, we drank some big old double IPAs, uh, all kinds of stuff, but um, I couldn't remember what where any of it was. Uh, but I did That's get a, a very, Brad. The, the, very the crowds well, they yeah, still ask when's true. Brad getting yeah, on yeah. Untapped in the comments. Never, 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 never. But you, then you'd remember. Um, then you'd be able to enrich this podcast with your views on beers that you can remember. Yeah, but that's the mystery gone then, isn't it? You know, it's like uh, ships passing in the night for me. Right. Like, oh, that's gorgeous. And then I've forgotten what it was. So, uh, you know. There we go. We, um, we, Bradley, we, you, you're going to have to bear with me. Just one second. I need to turn the glycol chiller off because it's about to kick in. Right. Go for it. And you Bit need to realness. remind me at the end of this podcast to turn it back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I always I think forget. You should, uh, we should release uh, ASMR podcast which is just noises from the brudio people don't want to hear what happens in here when there's no one else around why well, are you doing lots of farts is that what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 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 just me sniffing at my home brews and making sniffing weird noises. Farts. I've been you, sniffing uh, at my home brew this morning so the pastry stouts I took the adjuncts out today oh yeah um and it smells fucking amazing oh I've done it I've dropped one it smells Whoa absolutely amazing in here right now coffee cacao yeah. nibs hazelnuts all soaked in beautiful sweet stout it just smells amazing amazing Can't so actually wait. smell-o-vision would be better than asmr i reckon nice i think i'm gonna bring my growler when i come next weekend to take some beers away take some beer away you should you yeah, should yeah bring a wheelie um, case i can give you a lot of beer bradley we, yeah, we're, we're so far off track let's get back uh, on it. um uh. shall we talk about this week's video yeah, yeah. Before we get to that, Johnny, with, there's oh, yeah. also <laughs> there's also Bigfoot Festival coming up in about seven weeks' time, which we are performing at. And uh, it was great last year, wasn't it? So if anyone's out there, go buy a ticket to Bigfoot and then yes, if come, you are a Patreon, we have a discount code for you. It is in the Patreon forum, um, so you can go out and uh, jo- join our Patreon, and you'll get access to that, and you'll get like a year's worth of Patreon subscriptions off the price of bigfoot so you you can you know it's it's win win as um, well worth joining patreon even if you hate us exactly and you just exactly. you just love festivals just, just join pay us our once, patreon go in get the code come on dip out Boom. we'll take the money yeah Boom. mic drop <laughs> fuck you guys all the haters all the trolls Bra- bradley just you join- swore again come on oh shit oh. <laughs> oh oh god bugger oh 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 sorry it's all anyway. it's all god to um, so I, I should say that while we're on the topic of um, Bigfoot, what I did this week was I judged Raise the Bar, which mm. is uh, the um, the campaign that uh, the people that run London Craft Beer Festival, Bigfoot, 
uh, Edinburgh Craft Beer Festival, which is now Glasgow Craft Beer Festival, apparently. Um, plus lots of other festivals that every year they run a competition where new breweries, breweries that are younger than three years and smaller than a certain size can send in samples and then some um, great judges the, the big thinkers of the day will go through them and pick four breweries that can pour at all of the festivals, which is a pretty big deal for a small brewery. You're getting in front of hundreds of thousands of beer geeks. Um, and uh, I'm not going to lie, the quality was not where I wanted it to be, generally. Um, and I can't say who won, um, but we do have four absolutely brilliant new breweries um, that will be pouring. Um, and I think I think the winners will be announced in a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, I spent Wednesday drinking through, I think we drank about 45 different breweries, so 90 different beers. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I tweeted about it. I was I was hung over by 9 p.m. Nice. That is, it, that is, you know you've had a day if you're hung over by 9 p.m. But yeah, yeah, and I'm not usually even up at 9 p.m. <clears throat> no, no. So no. that was quite the day for me. Um, Still good, and, good to yeah, get the hangover movies. over the same day that you were drinking, though. Eh? That's probably a good, a good thing. It, what it means is you sleep through most of the hangover, which is a bit. Yeah, it's pretty clever. Wow, um, interesting. But I mean, the the best thing to do is just not, not drink ninety different beers in a day. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was, that's... I was, uh, I, I'm no by no means a beer judge, but I was thinking about coming to that, um, and then I had a sort of series of events happen this week that stopped An unfortunate me. Unfortunate series my... of events. Exactly. Not lemony slick it not involved. But a BM a big fucking BMW uh nearly writing off my car was involved. When I say writing off my car, they knocked my wing mirror off, but because I have a bit of a uh shit box, sorry, uh listeners, uh Lupo, uh that's twenty years old. It's actually an appreciating classic, Johnny, but the insurers told me that it was uneconomical to repair it, even though we're literally talking a wing mirror. Mm. They said it. They said, "Oh, those wing mirrors—they're quite expensive these days." So we're going to write your car off. Um, and I've just spent I've had a saga trying to get my car not written off. Uh, and and uh, that day in particular, I was struggling, so I, I couldn't make it to the uh, tastings. But hey. But the good um, news is, you might have found a wing mirror. Ah, oh, I've got a guy up in Scotland. <laughs> I don't know he's if got he's a in like, maybe. Yeah, maybe moves. he's in Glasgow. Maybe he's in. Maybe he's up by uh, We Are Beer Glasgow Festival. Um, I don't know, uh, but he's got a unit, Johnny. He's got a unit, a lockup, and he's uh, breaking a lupo, and uh, he's got me on tender hooks about. Does he, if does, he's does, gonna... he, does he happen to drive a BMW? And has he <laughs> has he swindled you? Uh, it was actually it was actually a female driver, Johnny. But I'm not going to get into that. Um, she told me so. Not to bore everyone, but I was sat stationary in a traffic jam on, uh, you know, a road that had a single lane going one way, single lane going another way, single lane going one way, single lane going another way, Johnny. And this Beamer, honestly, I thought I was dead because I saw it coming in my wing mirror at about 60 mile an hour in a built up uh, town centre in Croydon. I was coming back from a hospital visit visiting a poorly relative with my mother in the car in the passenger seat and this fucking beamer smashed past me the boom it made i thought uh it had, i just thought my car was totally mullered but it just boomed off this wing mirror and then um the the lady was just casually parked around the side not a scratch on her car and uh was like oh, I'm really you know she was like oh sorry I admit I did it uh she was like I said what are you doing you're racing down you know you could have killed someone if I had my arm out the window I would have had one less arm at this point um and she just said oh sorry I uh I was I was rushing to Sainsbury's rushing to Sainsbury's Johnny wow that that that's that's not a justification <laughs> no 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 so she she uh she declared full liability thankfully Quite right. But, um, Quite right. I should have. I should have done it for a whiplash injury, shouldn't I, Johnny? You should have. Yeah. Tr- trip off all Just things. Just get out. On hold, the get out of the car, holding your neck. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. the neck. Yeah. Mum, hold your neck. That's what yeah. I should have done. Anyway, that, that's uh, fraud. Shall we talk about this yeah, week's yeah. video? Yeah. Go on then. 
Oh, we've got him there. We've done it. Um, so this week's episode was the first in our series all about homebrewing a pastry stout. Um, yeah. And I regret everything. I regret starting this project. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I regret going to Sweden, but it, it's certainly a, a black mark against against going to Sweden ever again. Um, wow. Because it's, it's been a nightmare, honestly. Um it's the most complicated brew we've ever done, the most amount of ingredients we've ever done. I've spent an absolute bloody fortune um, on hazelnuts. And if um, if anything to go by, if, if, if the tasting this morning is anything to go by, there's not a lot of hazelnut character in my bloody beer. Oh, dear. <sighs> so um, the hazelnuts have gone back in, where, but I've taken out the cacao nibs. Um, and yeah, and then we've, you know, we've still got, you know, we've only done one video so far, and that was just sort of the prep. So I'm editing the brew day at the moment. Um, it is quite exciting, to be fair. I think the content's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I'm not brewing any pastry stouts ever again. I'm going to let the pros do it. <laughs> we'll leave it to Henock and yeah. the, the, the pastry wizards, uh, because I think you do have to be a bit of a mythical uh, wizard type character to get any sort of efficiency out of that brew day. I mean, bloody hell. Well, I mean, it's this crazy. is what I've learned. Nobody is being efficient in making these beers. I thought we'd messed up getting, I think we got uh, 62% mash, mash efficiency. Um, I've spoken to some brewers since who were like, you know, we get like 40, 45% on our big sweet stouts. So we, wow. we massively underestimated how much grain needed to needed to go in at those temperatures and those volumes to get and to get you know the final fg which we've missed as well like it's not as sweet as we'd want so it's just been you know it's a whole new world of brewing and i had no idea and we, we should have learned a little bit actually from um when we brewed metric tunnocks you know that beer had mm. lots of lovely flavor to it but it came out way too thin and we should have learned from that like we need to go big um Actually, interestingly, I got an email um, from uh, from Craig at Glen Affric, and the barrels are ready. The barrels wow. of metric tonics are ready. I kind of forgot we'd done that. But that's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's cool to know. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to have a chat with them um, probably next week um, and sort out what we're going to be doing with those barrels. One thing we won't be doing is calling it metric tonics because I don't want another cease and desist. But. Um, We'll, we'll find a way to get that out into the world and hopefully it's absolutely delicious they've dumped quite a few of the barrels so clearly the ones they've kept hopefully they're good or else they'd have been like you know what everyone's forgotten about it we'll just <laughs> we'll pretend it never happened but clearly they're confident we don't need to so it should be tasty what about one ton barrel so like ton as in t-u-n for tonics one ton barrel something like that i don't know we'll have a think S save it for the brainstorm bradley yeah, 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 yeah. No one needs to know that. Um, did you get any comments in, in this week's video, which was a homebrew video with yeah. no homebrewing in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone loved it, mate. Um, you you were really concerned that, that, like, there wasn't... Yeah, it's a homebrew video with no homebrewing in it. But, my God, it had an amazing deep dive with Henock. Uh, that access we got, it filmed so much in that, in that sort of 24-hour filming period in uh, Sweden. Yeah. But yeah, uh, they had <clears throat> had a comment from David Ellis. Ellis, entertainment, science, beer. What more does one want? Nothing. Agreed. I love that. I love that. So he he thought the jeopardy was in there. The science was in there. The entertainment was in there, Johnny. The uh, the insipid cinnamon swirls <laughs> were in there. Was that was definitely bun. the the worst cinnamon bun I've ever had in my life. There you go. Uh, Costco, Costa, I said Costco. Costa, useless, useless yeah. cinnamon buns. Sort your buns anyway. out. Exactly. I uh, had that one. Uh, I had another comment from uh, a person who's got kanji symbols. I believe they're kanji symbols. And a picture of a pixelated caveman lying down. Uh, he said, brilliant stuff, lads. That fella from Omnipolo... Is a proper bloke too. Good stuff all round. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know. He's a proper bloke though, He's Johnny. He's a proper bloke. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, sure. Yeah. I, I just thought that was so random. Yeah, I just thought it was great. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Proper bloke. He is a proper bloke though. He's great. I don't I know what one that... is, but if, if one is, if if one can be yeah. proper and a bloke, yeah, then yeah, yeah. yeah Henock is, is one. Yeah, oh, and YouTube. then we we had a. I'll I'll stop in a second. But we had another comment from Thomas Bouchard. He said, "Loving Brad's idea. When I was an Erasmus student in Sweden, 
I could have a coffee and a cinnamon roll every day. Several times a day. Sorry, Johnny. I always thought vanilla was cheating. Um, anyway, I, pro- I was going to leave that last bit out, but I, I thought I'd stick it in. What, but why I, is vanilla n- cheating? It's not, is it? It's not cheating. It's if delicious. anything, we learned from Henock that actually adding vanilla can kill other flavours. That yeah. was, remember he said that? It was like, oh yeah, of course. So he... Was that in regards to coffee or something? I can't remember. What, I think what, it was coffee was. that it had killed. Yeah, yeah. it definitely it hasn't killed... killed the coffee in your beer. Don't worry, it might have killed my hazelnuts. Oh, good stuff. Good but stuff. But your coffee stuff. is there in spades. But um, mate, to be an Erasmus student in Sweden, that's got to be pretty good, Thomas Bouchard. Um, I was reading the other day that any any person, uh, any student from anywhere around the world, can go and study in Norway for free in their higher education system. Go on, um, Norway. Which I, I thought was splendid. I've, I've got uh, one of my good friends, Andy, his brother Nick, went and studied in uh, Berlin, uh, in Germany, and he, he still lives out there now. Um, and I think when he studied, he everything was free, and he got like sort of bursaries or something. I think he even got a free travel card to like travel around. That obviously, that was when we were part of Europe, Johnny. Mm. We won't go into that, but um, I imagine it's not the same now that we I think, are I think the point was exiled. made, Britain sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I got a comment from TJ McNaught. Yes. Who says, okay, I've been less than kind about pastry stouts, but these technical challenges are very interesting. Your videos even led me to consider a run to the bottle shop to try one pastry stout. Oh. One. Uh, he's he's written one twice there. That's not me emphasising. Um, won't guarantee you I'll finish it, but you are opening my mind. And I can't think of anything I want to achieve more than to make somebody go, well, this sounds boring. Oh, but the video's interesting. Oh, I'm going to drink one of them. Um, that That is exactly. the, the journey I want our viewers to go on. And hopefully TJ McNaught is going to next message and say he enjoyed his pastry stout. Yeah, come on, TJ McNaught. We, we hope you enjoyed that, um, that thick... Uh... Engine oil esque pastry boy, I imagine. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that's a wonderful thing. If you can change somebody's mind or open up their mind to to sort of see something differently from a different angle, what a great thing to be able to do! It's brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's wonderful preaching to the converted, but it's wonderful to do some converting every now and then. Um, so appreciate your honesty, TJ McNaught. Um, Bradley, so we're 26 minutes in and yeah. we haven't tackled a giant question. Do, do we leave it to next week or do we? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Good. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think it's too big a question and it's slightly nihilistic as well. So let's let's end on a high. All right. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll save the nihilism for next week, um, which will be coming out a day before uh, five hours of Johnny and Brad getting drunk trying to do a pretty hot, complicated homebrew. Um, so that it's going to be one hell of two days. Um, yeah, well, that's I hope, that. Uh, oh. I, oh, I was just going to say, I hope everyone enjoys the bank holiday weekend. I didn't even realise it was a bank holiday weekend until about Thursday uh, this week. So I'm, I'm pretty <gasps> chuffed that we've what got What a joyous surprise off. that must have been then. Brilliant, eh? Yeah. It's all right. It's of course, as bad. freelancers, we don't really know what day it is and we don't no, really take days no. off. But still, it's no. nice to know that other people are going to enjoy it. Yeah, great stuff. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so have a wonderful bank holiday weekend uh, if you're in the UK, for those who celebrate. Um, we'll see you on Wednesday for the brew day of our Imperial Stout, uh, Pastry Stout. Then we'll see you on Wednesday, on Friday for a bleak Friday 5pm. And then we're brewing again on Saturday and it's a pretty similar recipe. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting as well. Don't forget that you can still order the box and brew along with us if you are a home brewer from Malt Miller. There's a link in the description so you can join us. But even if you're not a home brewer, dip in. It should be a lot of fun and there'll be lots of beer being drunk and interesting um interesting chat being had so until then it's uh, love and beer from me and brain the bubble and friday 5 p.m podcasts are brought to you by the nerds behind youtube's craft beer channel you can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel and if you love what we do support us via patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing discord forum a positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer food and homebrewing love and beer Love and beer